Hi, this is Gabe Belanger once again from Computer Geeks On Call. What I want to cover today is how to set up email in Outlook 2003. Outlook 2007 looks very similar, so this should help you there as well. First thing to do is to locate Outlook. So if we go to the Start button, go to All Programs, the Microsoft Office, and there we see Microsoft Outlook 2003. So we click on it, and there is Outlook. Now, we have an error right away. Why? Because by default, Outlook tries to send and receive email. Now, I've set up something just as a start so that I can show you guys how to set up email. So let's get rid of that dumb error. Next thing we want to do is go to our Tools menu at the top. This has been the same way for a long time. You go to Tools, and you go to a thing called Email Accounts, or accounts. Click on email accounts and you get this window which is kind of disorienting in a way. View or change existing email accounts. If you do not have one set up, a window will come up right away. If for some reason you would like to, you can add a new email account. Let's just go with view or change existing email accounts. Either way, here is the existing account. Maybe you've tried to work on it and it hasn't worked so far. So you can see I put in a fake one here just to start out with empty settings. So let's click on this button called change. Click on the change button and this is really what matters right in here. First thing we look at is your name. So for me, put in my name. What is the significance of this? This is how it appears in email. When someone says from, this is what it'll display. This is the display name. Next is my email address. Now obviously uh, this has to be typed in properly. So there's my email address. This is probably the most important part, which is your logon information. You have to know your logon information for this to work. Most of the time, it's a user ID or the full email address. Usually the user ID is just, in my case, Gabe. It's the name, the so-and-so or the alias, at computergeeksoncall.ca is my full email address. Sometimes the username will just be Gabe. Most of the time nowadays, it's the full email address. The problem is the internet service providers and other people who provide email they do things differently. So you really have to have the username required to get access to your email from your internet service provider or whoever is hosting your email. So you put in your email address normally. You must know the password for your email address. I'm just putting in a fake one. If you choose to remember password, you won't have to type it every time. That's recommended. Next thing you have to know from your internet service provider or your mail provider is your incoming mail server. So it might be mail.corp.com. It might be something else. You have to figure that out. How do you figure that out? You call your internet service provider or whoever provides your email and you ask them, what is the incoming mail server? What is the outgoing mail server? And they will tell you. Next thing we do is we click on more settings. In more settings, we can see right here the label for the email account. It could be anything. So I'll just call this one Gabe at Computer Geeks on Call. Why? Because it's simple. If I'm looking at more than one email account on this computer with Outlook, then I'm going to be able to tell that this account was for this email address. So I recommend you do that. Um, the other piece of information is the reply email. And usually I will copy and paste, simplify my life. Now they don't let you do it with the mouse, but if you hit control C and then you go to the field you care about where we want to paste in and then go control V, it pastes in your email. Sometimes things are disabled, but control C and control V, a lot of times they aren't. So now I've got the proper reply email. I like to copy and paste so I don't make an error in this because this is actually used by Outlook and it's important. Outgoing email server, 
depends on your internet service provider you can ask them directly you can leave this where you don't have to uh, authenticate to send or you can put a check mark and use same settings you can also put a check mark and then put in your email address here again and the password again and that's the information that we typed in before that's this information right here so let's go back to more settings so for outgoing server you can leave it blank if you don't require authentication before you send email most companies do this use same settings as incoming mail server which is that area there or log in some companies require that you actually type it in most companies don't require SPA that's an extra layer of security so I'm going to go with what's typical then we go to the connection usually you leave that alone and then advanced there's two things I'll say here <laughs> it failed again. Two things I'll say here. Oh, just let me have a second here. Okay, so there's two things I'll say here. Incoming mail server 110, outgoing mail server 25. Those are the defaults, but the spammers and other virus and spyware guys, they've caused a lot of problems. So some companies make these custom, they make them different. And normally it's the outgoing mail server that'll be different. So I've seen these numbers commonly used for alternates, 1025 for outgoing mail server, or 587. Those are alternates that companies use. 25 is the standard. The last thing that's of importance here is this server requires an encrypted connection. Your internet service provider would have set that up, and you have to select that. Uh, Bell Canada in Ontario here usually requires this. For home users, for business users, they don't. That Again, these pieces of information, the incoming server uh, port number and the outgoing server port number are defined by your internet service provider. This is the typical situation. Uh, there are other outgoing uh, server SMTP numbers that I already mentioned. Server timeouts. If your internet service provider is slow, the computer will just give up on email after one minute in this setting, but we can move this and say let's try for five minutes and ten seconds and that means it'll it'll maintain that connection on your end for five minutes and ten seconds obviously your internet service provider has the power to just cut it off when it feels like it but from from your end you can say well let's try to get or send that email for five minutes if it's down to one minute your email program will give up if you have a large attachment boost this up a bit and try it again if you're having difficulty now delivery, this is really important. Leave a copy of messages on the server. Remove from the server after 10 days. Why would you do this? Well, you would do this if you want to have your email stored on the mailbox with your internet service provider. One reason is you have a BlackBerry. If you set this, the BlackBerry has an opportunity to forward your email from the mailbox and you can get your email to this Outlook program and you can leave it there for webmail as well. Does it stay on forever? No. We can set it to stay there for 10 days. We can set it to stay there for 90 days, 99 days. But ultimately, the internet service provider decides when to purge your mailbox because there's way too much email at a certain point. Your internet service provider would tell you. But if you have a BlackBerry, um, you should set this. And you can set it to say something like 10 days. If you want to access your webmail, um, you can set this. And you can look at your inbox on your webmail as well as downloading it into Outlook. Some of my customers use this so they have a common inbox across two or three computers. And that's it for the settings. So then we would click Next and Finish. Now when we go into our Tools and Email Accounts, click on Next, click on Change, you have all the settings there. Click on the More Settings button. If you have to change something later, Maybe you, you need to change the way outgoing mail is authenticated, or maybe you need to change the port numbers for your incoming mail server or outgoing mail server. And that is briefly how to set up email in Outlook.